hospitality and catering sector. Let's get a publican, Adam Brooks from Essex. Adam, these vaccine passports, they're not going to affect pubs at this stage, but they are affecting nightclubs. Uh, do you fear, do you fear in hospitality, in the pub trade, this is the beginning of a slippery slope? Uh, I do indeed. And I think a lot of the language w worries me uh, and a lot of the language from backbenchers that, that feel this is a, a initial step to, to vaccine passports being rolled out to more venues. Um, there, there's genuine worry in the hospitality industry. And, you know, when I've got people like Wes Streeting tweeting me and, and I'm listening to the PM saying, this is pro-hospitality, this is, this is for you, we don't want it. We do not want it. I, I, I know nightclub bosses, you know, I, I used to have nightclubs myself. They do not want vaccine passports. They do not want vaccine COVID ID or certification, whatever you call it. You know, this is going to put a lot of people off the hassle and out of principle, really. You know, we live in a free, we're meant to live in a free society, Nigel. And yeah. a lot of people see well, this, they see this as a police state, you know. Adam, I have to tell you, mate, I like pubs. I like a beer, as you well know. Um, if we get to the stage where I have to show a COVID passport to go and buy a pint, I will not be going. And I'm sorry to say that to you as a publican, but that's just how I feel yeah. about it. And I suspect quite a lot of your punters would say the same. The other point about this, yeah. maybe, maybe your industry ought to start standing up and shouting a little bit more loudly, is I've been utterly convinced by the argument that if you have a vaccine passport, that might mean you were injected six months ago and you've not been tested since, you may well be positive and carrying the virus, whereas if you've had a lateral flow test, you know that in a certain point in a few hours before, you've tested negative. So therefore, actually, vaccine passports could be a means of spreading, not stopping infection in hospitality yeah. venues. And I, I just urge you, Adam, and your industry to start shouting that a bit more loudly. I mean, I, I can't shout any louder, to be honest, Nigel. I don't know if you look at my tweets at all or, or, or not, but, you know, I'm quite obsessive on there, and I understand that. You know, my wife even tells me I'm, I'm obsessive. But when you believe in something so strongly, and, you know, I've got personal reasons why I love pubs so much. My dad took his first pub in 1964. It's in our blood. He's not around no more, and I know he'd be fighting for his industry. And yeah. I'm not going to give up. And, you know... Luckily, I can use my medium on Twitter. I, I don't know why I've got so many followers. And, you know, I am getting responses from MPs. I've, I've got to mention Steve uh, Barkley. He's, be, he's been unbelievable. Um, not Steve Barkley. Uh, he's, he's got out of my head now. He's, uh, what, Baker you know, got, or Baker back? Steve Baker. Right, and I'm going fine. to apologise to him because I've, right. I've been speaking to him. He'll week. forgive you now. He's been... I hope so. Steve Baker has been amazing um, for voicing, you know, the concerns and opposing these Plan B. Um, I can't thank him enough, you know. And they, right. they, I can't thank, I can't well, thank Adam, the hundred. Listen, so, keep fighting the good fight, and we'll yeah. come back to you regularly as somebody representing the pub trade with as much passion as you've got. So thank you.